Hello all, Jeff from Real Cheap Films here, with the first of what I hope to be many tutorials on iClone cinematography. In these tutorials, I hope to demonstrate how to adjust your cameras, lighting, and so on to achieve shots like in famous movies. Today we're going to look at the dolly zoom shot. It's also been called the Vertigo shot since Alfred Hitchcock first used it in the movie Vertigo. Another scene that uses this shot is from the Steven Spielberg movie Jaws, where Roy Scheider realizes that a shark attack is happening while he's at the beach. Let's take a quick look at that scene right now. You can see that Roy Scheider seems to stay in one spot while the world seems to change all around him, indicating shock, realization, disorientation. Let's see if we can recreate this scene. The effectiveness of the vertigo shot depends on the close adjustment of two camera elements, the dolly and the zoom. Each of them is used to bring an object closer to the viewer and make it larger on screen, but they have different effects. Just to demonstrate, Look at this basic scene I made with just some blocks, with one placed in the foreground, one in the middle ground, and one in the background. I'm going to create a camera that we can adjust, then I'm going to move the preview camera to show an overhead shot so we can see exactly where our props and cameras are actually located in space. Now we return to our regular camera and move it until it shows the blocks in a row going from foreground to background. Right now we're using the standard iClone focal length of a 50 millimeter lens on the camera as you can see right here. The first thing we're going to do is to set the focal length down to 20 millimeters, what's called a wide angle lens. You can see why it's called this. Suddenly the scene has gotten wider and we can see more of the area that was on the sides of the blocks. We also look like we've moved further away from the blocks even though we've not moved the camera at all. Now let's try setting the focal length of the lens in the other direction, to 105 millimeters. You may have guessed that this is called a narrow lens because now we see much less of the area to the sides of the blocks. And it also looks like we moved a lot closer to the blocks. But again, we've not adjusted the position of the camera at all. Narrow lenses like this are also called long lenses or telephoto lenses. Now watch what happens if we set the camera lens to different focal lengths and then change the position of the camera until the foreground block is the same apparent distance from the viewer. Since we're already on the long lens, we're going to back the camera up a bit. On a real-world film set, this is called dollying back. It also helps to set your camera's X rotation to an even 90 degrees, perfectly horizontal, and then move it up or down as necessary, so that when we dolly back using our scroll wheel, the camera remains at the same height. Once we have our camera at the right position, we can take a picture of our scene and save it. We'll come back to it in just a moment. Now we'll reset the camera's focal length back to a 20 millimeter wide lens then dolly the camera back in until the foreground block appears to be the same size as it was a moment ago. And we'll take another picture. Now looking at the two pictures side by side, you can see how the focal length of the lens affects the look of the scene. In the wide lens shot on the left, you can see the depth and the distance between the blocks in the foreground, middle ground, and background. But in the long shot on the right, there's a compression of the depth, known as foreshortening. So the blocks appear to be much closer to each other than they actually are. Now that we know the basic theory, and how the focal length of the lens affects how things in the background appear in relation to the foreground, we're ready to try recreating the scene from Jaws. 
Let's take one more look at it again. You can now figure out that the vertigo effect is accomplished by starting with a long lens and the camera far away from the subject, then zooming out while simultaneously dollying in. This has the effect of keeping your foreground in the same place relative to the viewer while pushing the background further and further back. So let's try it ourselves. To save time, I have already prepared a beach scene in iClone, and I filled it with characters and props. You can see from this view that the characters, trees, and furniture have all been placed with a lot of distance between them, with our main character in what will be the foreground, the palm trees in the background, and various characters at varying points in between. Now we're going to look through a camera I've already set up, pointing directly at our main character and with a long lens, but with the camera far enough back that the whole character's in the scene. You can also see that I've set the camera's X angle at 90 degrees, again perfectly horizontal, so when we dolly back and forth, the camera's height does not change, and it will always point at the same spot on our foreground character. We then need to decide how long we want our shot to last, say six seconds or so. We'll move our time indicator to the proper spot and change the lens of the camera to a wide angle lens. Now we can see a difficulty. Part of the magic of the vertigo shot is that the foreground subject does not change in size as the shot progresses. We need to dolly the camera in to compensate for the wide-angle lens, but how much? The best way to handle this is with a guide, and fortunately, iClone comes with just the thing. Let's reset our timeline to the beginning and add one more thing to our project, the scope image layer. We can then adjust this image layer until the subject's head is right in the middle of the scope, and we can see by the little ticks on the scope lines exactly how wide and how tall we want the head to be. Now, when we skip ahead in our timeline, we can zoom in until the subject's head meets the same tick marks, or as close as we can get. There's one more thing we need to do. When I was first experimenting with this technique, I discovered that while the camera dolly can change in a linear fashion, and the camera lens can also change in a linear fashion. Because the camera lens distorts the depth of the scene optically like a real lens, the change in apparent size of the foreground object will not necessarily change in a linear fashion. In other words, there'll be a greater change in the apparent size of the character when we're at the long end of the scale and going from 105 millimeters down to 95 millimeters than there will be when we're at the other end of the scale going from 30 to 20 millimeters. So in order to keep the apparent size constant as much as possible, we're going to add several keyframes, about one each second, to fine-tune the camera position at each keyframe.
all finished. We'll set our timeline back to zero, remove the site guideline, and see how well we did. Thanks for watching. If anyone has a suggestion what the next cinematography tutorial should be, or if you know a scene in a particular movie you want to try and recreate, feel free to leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. This is Jeff at Real Cheap Films saying have a good day, go make a movie.